It is absolutely perfect. It is brand new. And at 101 carats, it's one of the biggest of its kind and one of the most expensive diamonds in the world. But do you know how much money it is actually worth? At an auction for the super rich, it is auctioned and finds a new owner for 23 million Swiss francs. Geneva in Switzerland. People who live here are used to luxury, like in the Four Seasons Hotel de Berg, right by Lake Geneva. The perfect place to auction jewels and diamonds, as well as the most expensive diamonds in the world. Christophe Vallès is responsible for security. The showcase for the diamond is here. As you can see, how it is secure, I cannot answer you. But there are definitely a special security measures for it. The diamond is brought to the showroom via the back entrance. Would you have thought that a special security company is responsible for transporting the diamond from one place to the next? Because the diamond was already exhibited in New York and Hong Kong. The case with the diamond in it is sealed and equipped with a chip so that the million dollar item can be tracked everywhere via satellite. Christoph Weyers checks the case for any damage. If the seal is still properly fastened, and of course, if the diamond is actually there. For him too, this isn't an everyday situation. Definitely, it's unique. It will be unique for a long time, so we need to be more focused, more uh, concentrated on what we are doing. Definitely, yes. Now the diamond has to go to its designated place in the safety display cabinet. For the jewellery experts, this is a special moment as they too see the gem for the first time. The diamond is brand new. Did you know that it was found in a diamond mine in Botswana? It was polished for a whole 21 months until it had the perfect shape. At 101.73 carats, it is the biggest in its class. As a perfectly clear diamond without any inclusions or scratches, it is regarded as perfect. At auction, it is now being sold. And as it is still new, the new owner will be able to give it its name. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, for the final session of our magnificent jewelry auction today at Christie's. Two million nine fifty is the bid. The interest in the auction room is huge. About 200 buyers are here to bid on it personally. Another 300 are bidding via telephone. 306 jewels with a collective value of 63 million euros are being sold today. Sold for you, Jean-Marc, 3 million francs to paddle 9103. Thank you very much, all of you, for that. Four-digit numbers on the paddle show that the bidder has unlimited credit, so usually millionaires. Customers with three-digit numbers may only bid up to a certain amount. Then it is time for the highlight of the evening, the auctioning of the biggest diamond in the world. All right, here we have an offer of 15 million francs on the telephone, at 15 million. 16 million, all right, at 16 million then, the bid is here for you on the telephone team. 17 million. 18 million. 20 million for you, David. 21 million. 22 million, 500,000. 23 million, please. 23 million. 23 million. At 23 million then, sending it now. A warning. Last chance now at 23 million. 23 million francs. Sold to you, Raulo, 23 million, paddle 9107. Thank you very much. Sold for 23 million Swiss francs. The buyer is the American high-class jeweler, Harry Winston. They were very, very happy and ecstatic to have bought the stone, but they were also very confident right from the bat that they wanted to buy the diamond tonight. The buyer on the phone that Julie was bidding for was less fortunate. 
Well, I guess the client was probably a bit nervous, yes, but um, yes, it was the last minute. I was not expected to do this uh, this call, and he handed up during the two session. And uh, but um, you know, you have to be really, really fast in your biddings. Its name, Winston Legacy, and the most expensive diamond so far, Pink Star, sold for seventy-one million dollars in April 2017 at Sotheby's Hong Kong. Chocolate. Just the word alone melts in the mouth. But would you have thought that 50 grams of this bar cost an astounding 220 euros? This is the most expensive chocolate in the world. And it comes from Ecuador. But what makes this chocolate so expensive? The Austrian Karl Schweitzer sells the expensive fine chocolate all over the world and is examining the harvest. The 30-year-old lives in Ecuador and came to this being his business by fluke. Das interessante ist ja, dass sie von Grafikdesigner dann praktisch Kakaobauer geworden bin. Wir waren natürlich zuerst sehr unsicher, haben dann aber beschlossen, dass es eben noch keine Schokolade im im Luxussektor gibt. For three years now, he has been selling the luxury bars for 220 euros per 50 grams. The actual production of this special chocolate is no different to in a big factory. The beans are first fermented and then dried until they turn brown. Then it is time for the roasting process, two hours at 130 degrees. No other special ingredients except the ancient kind of beans can be found. But did you know that regular chocolate contains 46% sugar? Other ingredients are milk powder, cocoa butter and other additives. Only 12% are cocoa mass. Opposed to this, the luxury chocolate only contains pure cocoa and cane sugar. Hours of whipping make the chocolate nice and creamy. Something that makes the chocolate even more special. Everything here is done by hand. But can this handmade luxury chocolate made from ancient cocoa make you rich? Also, ob man Millionär wird mit der Luxusschokolade? Äh, also, meiner, meiner Erfahrung nach auf keinen Fall. Äh, Luxus hat auf keinen Fall die gleiche Gewinnspanne wie zum Beispiel äh, Massenindustrie orientiertes Unternehmen. To make up for this, this chocolate is pure luxury to acquire taste buds. Denise Valencia is responsible for the fine tuning. Limpiando las como unos pequeños pedacitos de chocolate que quedan para que al cliente le llegue la barra lo más perfecto posible. This is also part of the high class business concept, a bean. La pepa viene de la naturaleza. Es como lo que pasa en el vino. Pruebas un delicioso vino y pruebas la uva de la que se hizo ese vino. The most expensive chocolate in the world comes in a luxurious casket, including food tongs. Wrapped up this way, it costs around 154 euros. This includes the chocolate and the extremely special cocoa bean. These amazing coffee beans originate from Piedra de Plata. There we have arranged to meet Servio Pshad. Once a week, Servio and his team go out to harvest. After a four-hour-long walk, we are finally at our destination. Ya no apunta, no. Estamos, estamos buscando eh, cacao, cacao nacional, fin, fino en aroma, y justamente con todas estas características, ¿no? Eh, porque es un cacao muy selecto. Podemos, como vemos la mazorca de ahí, es un cacao nacional puro. No plantation, but single ancient trees. There are only nine of these left in the region. In order to be able to find them again, Servio has marked them with ribbons like these. The trees are of the Nacional breed. Would you have thought that this tree is an incredible 130 years old? Opposed to on the plantations where the trees are cropped in order for them to give off a bigger yield, the ancient cocoa trees grow up to a height of 15 meters. Aquí tenemos una, una mazorca de, de cacao. 100% nacional de estos árboles que no salieron en los resultados de análisis de, de, de laboratorio de los ADN 100% rare and therefore valuable the ancient cocoa beans that we have picked cost about twice as much as regular cocoa when the fruit are yellow they are ready to be picked 
Underneath the hard skin, about 40 whitish seeds can be found, which are covered by a sweet pulp. The people in Ecuador turn these into fresh juice, the so-called zucco de cacao. Como sabe eh, eh, la pepa perfecta de un buen cacao, de un buen... Es ese sabor dulce, un dulce como un caramelo, ¿no? que te puedes comer y, y puedes saborear ese sabor muy agradable. Muy... Y todo esto pasa para hacer el chocolate. So, not only the taste of the ancient beans, but also the rareness of the trees make the chocolate what it is. The most expensive in the world. Thai yogurt froth, goose liver praline chocolate, lobster on tea extract, sashimi steak. That's the menu of the supposedly best restaurant in Asia. The ultraviolet serves its guests 22 courses. But did you know dining there costs 900 euros? Bigger, higher, Shanghai. And right in the middle, food taster Pete. The hungry food expert wants to satisfy his appetite in Asia's most expensive restaurant. Is that a good idea? Huh. Is this really it? Is, is this ultraviolet? Mm -hmm. Only yes. This, this, this is supposed to be the best restaurant in town? This is the best restaurant? You have to find out by yourself. Okay, let's do it. Whoa. Welcome to Thank you. Bye. Uh, bye. Why is the door closing? This is getting creepy already. Is one of these glasses poison? And then the other glasses are delicious? Whoa! <laughs> oh, this is awesome! Damn, this is cool. Wow. Hello. Welcome to Ultraviolet. Oh, thank you very much. Wow. Before the food is served, the chef, Greg Robinson, explains the proceedings to Pete. We serve 10 guests a night. We serve one menu. That's a 22 course menu. That includes a beverage pairing. So many courses, that's just fine by Pete. Greg lets the show begin. Would you have imagined the room adapts to each course of the menu? First, we go down. Are we actually going down? We'll find out later. We'll see if we have to go back up. <laughs> but when does the decent food arrive? Greg tantalizes Pete. Does the ambiance lift the dish? Does it bring an emotion? Does it bring a memory? And that is the reason that we put the ambiances with the dishes. So you will see some are figurative, some are literal, some have humor behind them. Each dish has a different story to tell. Finally, time for course number one, a stuffed giant oyster. An animated seascape comes with it. Have you opened an oyster before? No. Take your knife from your bowl. Yep. Take it from the back, bang it a few times. It's a little bit harder. All right, take your, the tip of your knife and just slowly, slowly put that in the bowl. Just cut across that very lightly, horizontally. So you have two bites. And try to get a little bit of everything all together. A little bit of everything means oyster with black beluga caviar and lemon sorbet. It really tastes so fresh right now because of everything going around, like surrounding me. I love it. And now course number two, bread sponge with champagne froth and smoked truffle. Oh, wow. Truffle mania bread. I smell cigar. Smoked with cigar. <laughs> Correct. That is so cool. And in fact, the chef has smoked the truffle in cigar smoke. It's so simple, like you said, but that tastes so good. Did you know that 25 chefs polish this menu? So the whole show is run on a timeline. Wall projector one, wall projector two, wall projector three, wall projector four, 
this is the table projector one and two. So you kind of orchestrate it, right? You compose. And then on there, you have the stop and the go. So each dish has different chapters within the dish. Greg has sent for the waiters for course number three. They serve soup. Bouillabaisse. A so-called sphere of fish stock, along with aioli and basil. Plays on your tongue, on the, yeah. on the back of your mouth, it's going to continue. You get the elements of the aioli, a bit of the basil, the garlic, the fish. All this requires a lot of technical support. 14 kilometers of cable and 56 loudspeakers are skillfully hidden from the guests. There's a lot involved in this, and you only serve 10 people a night. How much does it cost per person to come here? 6,000 RMB per person. It's expensive, but for the experience that you get, pretty reasonable. Thank you very much for showing me, and I will come back one day. Looking forward to a very nice so meeting much. you. See you later. See you soon. 900 euros, beverages not included in the most expensive restaurant in Asia. This is it, the most expensive breed of dog in the world, the Tibetan Mastiff, so to speak, the Rolls Royce among dogs. But do you actually know how much a dog like this costs? Here comes the dearest dog in the world, worth an incredible 1.5 million euros. The coastal town of Qingdao in China. Here, dog breeder Lu Liang runs a farm for Tibetan Mastiffs. Every morning, running training is on the agenda. Strong and well-built dogs simply sell better. Their looks are also very important. Dog keeper Chang Shong Chao is the dog's hairdresser, so to speak, as the grooming of the fur takes up most of the day. Shang Xiong Chao shows us the most sacred place on the farm, the breeding area. Except for him and his boss, no one is permitted to enter here. Only a short while ago, nine new pups were born. They are a real treasure. Would you have thought that a little pup like this will later weigh 80 kilos? Just after two months, the offspring will have already reached a weight of 15 kilos. Already now, Lu Liang can tell which dogs will end up in the top segment and which are more average. Dog keeper Zhong Wei cooks for the dogs every evening. Scrambled egg, grain and chicken heads are on the menu. Oh, uh, this is not a up to three kilos of this concoction are devoured by the Tibetan Mastiffs every evening. The next morning, the dog fan, Kao Chongchuan, arrives. He wants to buy a Tibetan Mastiff from the farm today. And here it is, a three-month-old male dog. Will he like the dog? Kao Chongchuan doesn't show any emotion yet. <laughs> Do we have a match? Lu Liang seems to have actually met Kao Xiong Chuan's taste. Now it is time to talk business. Lu Liang's price is 375,000 euros. <laughs> He is content. Incredible. A quarter of a million for a dog. But more extreme prices are possible. 
Do you know who really owns the most expensive dog in the world? Gaoping, multimillionaire and Tibetan Mastiff collector. In the coal mining business, he made millions. Right next to his office, he has built a whole complex for his 20 dogs. One of them is the most expensive dog in the world. So there it is, Dasho Wang, the great Lion King. Would you have thought that he is the most expensive dog in the world? At the end of 2012, Gao Peng paid an incredible 1.5 million euros for this dog. But it becomes clear that the owner always keeps a respectful distance from his prized possession. This dog is the most expensive dog in the world. It's a big dog. 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 The majestic animal only lets dog trainer Yu Fei touch him. For Gao Ping, the dog is really just a valuable possession. Tibetan Mastiffs are, without a doubt, noble creatures. But for the Chinese, they are also an unusual status symbol. Did you know that the lotus flower is the supplier of one of the most exclusive and rare fabrics in the world, lotus silk? From this material, an Italian luxury brand makes a very special jacket, costing 7,000 euros. We are traveling to Italy and are meeting Pierluigi Loro Piana. He is always on the lookout for the most valuable fabrics in the world and so discovered the lotus fibers. It's the finest fiber in the world. It looks like linen, it looks like rose silk, but it doesn't wrinkle as linen or rose silk. Very comfortable to be, to be dressed, to be wear, and particularly the breathability, it's quite interesting. The properties of this fabric are unique. It cools the wearer when it's hot, it is completely wrinkle-free, and is as soft as velvet. This material is so rare that only very few people know how to weave this material. This fabric is probably 1,500 years old. It's something that they made for forever. So the idea was to cooperate with them in order to sell this fabric around the world, although it's a very limited quantity. Therefore, we are traveling to meet the people who produce the valuable lotus silk in Burma, or as it is known today, Myanmar. In the small town of Nyangshui, the people live like 100 years ago. The Inpa people live at the banks of Lake Inle. Around their houses, right by the water, they grow lotuses in water fields. We accompany silk weaver Titi U while she harvests the lotus stems. The production of the lotus silk is an old and very difficult craft. The women at Lake Inle are masters in this craft and are second to none in the world. First, weaver Titi O has to remove the fibers from the lotus stem. In order to do so, she takes four stems at once, lacerates them with a knife again and again, and then twists them into opposing directions. This brings out the extremely thin fibers. The difficult thing about this, they mustn't tear. Titi O carefully twists them into a thread. Would you have thought that it is only possible to process the lotus plant where it was harvested? The weaver explains why. <laughs> For 
For a single jacket made from lotus fabric, the women turn the fibers of 26,000 stems into threads. This amount makes about two and a half meters of cloth. But until then, there are still many hours of work ahead of them. Now, the weaving can begin. Boss Pyeong Sho is responsible for this. She has developed a sophisticated technique with which she actually measures the yarn for the fabric. Only she may do this job, as this way she can be sure that none of the expensive material is left over or wasted. Her measuring has proved itself over the course of many years. <laughs> Would you have thought that it takes a whole day to prepare the loom for the upcoming work? Slowly, centimeter by centimeter, the valuable fabric is now made. Before it is now about to go on its long journey around the world, Boss Pyeongcho checks its quality. <laughs> At the other end of the world, the tailors at the Italian luxury label now begin their work and make one of the highest quality jackets in the world out of the lotus silk. Available for purchase at 7,000 euros. It is the most expensive salt on earth, the Leso salt. But you know how much the salt is actually worth. It sells for up to 90 euros per kilo. On this island in the Baltic Sea, about 30 kilometers from the Danish mainland, the most expensive salt in the world is produced. So we're traveling to Leso. It is only possible to reach the island with its 180 inhabitants via ferry. Whenever I go across, I always bring some Leso salt and they are expecting me to, to bring some. One kilo of Leso's white gold costs up to 90 euros, as much as no other salt in the world. Poul Christensen produces it. We meet him at home for breakfast, and here we see it for the first time, the valuable Leso salt. It's very soft, beautiful and soft, and, and you can use it with your fingers, so both on the food and on the table. So we love the taste, the texture, it's very smooth and it's easy to granulate. And that's a very good thing. But why is this salt around 200 times more expensive than salt in the supermarket? Poole will now show us. For his valuable salt, he pumps salty groundwater out of special wells. And this is how the Leso salt comes to exist. The groundwater in a part of the island contains a whopping 12% of sodium chloride. Especially during the winter, the sea often floods the flat marshlands and seeps through the first few ground layers. At about two meters depth, a layer of clay stops the salty water. Here, it then slowly begins to evaporate, and what is left is highly concentrated salt water. Poole and his team then collect the so-called salt brine from the naturally occurring wells. <laughs> Flavorful brine is then turned into the most expensive salt in the world in the salt works. Would you have thought that all the production steps here are done by hand? This is the reason for the white leso salt at up to 90 euros per kilo being so expensive. And there is another reason for the price being so high. Producing it takes a very long time. In the big casseroles, the salty water is gently heated up for about 24 hours on a big wood fire. The best is 80 degrees. That's what we call to simmer. Because if you go to the boiling point, some of the bitter salts will start crystallizing uh, with the, the good salt. 
Bitter salts such as magnesium sulfate would spoil everything. At 80 degrees, only sodium chloride and minerals crystallize. After a whole day on the boil, it is finally time. The most expensive salt in the world can be skimmed from the surface. Every day we look at the salt and watch the crystals, the size of the crystals. You can see huge crystals. You can see the flakes of the salt and it's very crunchy. Now the salt flakes need to dry off in the wicker baskets. About 70 tonnes of salt are produced by the small factory each year. Not too large an amount. Of course, it will have its price. Spread out on wooden boards, the valuable salt now dries out completely. Uh, you can see it will be like this if, if we don't uh, do this. Um, so, and then next day the salt will be totally dry. We are curious and of course now want to taste the most expensive salt in the world. That's a flake of salt and it's also crunchy when it's dried. Not too much. Not too much. Ooh, very salty. The salt has a very intensive taste. Would you have thought that in order to season something, a couple of precious flakes are enough? Our salt has dried out by now. In this machine, the last unwanted particles, like limestone, are now filtered out. The calc will burn into the pan with the fire. And then we got this. And then this, this will follow the salt up here and then we take it out here and separate it here. Thanks to salty groundwater and elaborate manual labor, this salt doesn't contain any bitters or chemical additives. And at about 90 euros per kilo, the white gold of Leso is the most expensive in the world. It is the most expensive spice in the world, the charapita chili. One kilo costs over 20,000 euros. Would you have thought that it is even more expensive than saffron? Originally, it comes from Peru, but the chili grower Eric Stekovitz is the only person to cultivate it outside South America, to be more specific, in the little Hungarian plain. After about 10 months, the chilies are ready to be harvested. Each single berry has to be picked by hand. Is that why they are so expensive? Ganz wichtig ist, dass der Stiel drauf bleibt, weil der Chili wird jetzt noch getrocknet und damit unten kein Saft vom Trocknen herausrinnt, äh, muss der Stiel drauf bleiben und alle Früchte, die jetzt geerntet werden ohne Stiel, müssen dann später aussortiert werden. Dann muss man ganz genau wissen, welche Früchte voll reif sind, also auf keinen Fall halbreife Früchte herunternehmen. After two hours of manual labor, we only have one dish full. Do you know how much it will be worth in the end? Was wiegt diese Schale jetzt? 100 Gramm. Fertig, 10 Gramm. Für zwei Stunden Arbeit, 10, 10 Gramm. Gramm? 10 Gramm, ja. Hm. But still, that is about 200 euros, a proud sum. But the price mainly derives from Eric being the first person to cultivate the charapita outside of Peru on a large scale. The fact that he grows the charapita at all is more of a coincidence. Eric liked the color and he bought the seeds for about four euros. He had no idea what they would be worth later. We have for two years vier Samen von dem bekommen. In einer Frucht sind etwa zehn drinnen. Das heißt, es hat alles begonnen mit einer halben Frucht. Also ein halbes von diesen kleinen Beeren hier. Ja, hat uns zu vier Pflanzen verholfen. Und aus den vier Pflanzen haben wir dann nächstes Jahr so viele Pflanzen gemacht, dass wir jetzt ein ganzes Folienhaus davon haben. In order to grow them, especially one thing is necessary, warmth. The small Hungarian plain is ideal for this, as the temperatures here are consistently warm throughout the year. 
Deshalb wachsen hier Chilis, aber nur hier. Das ist in einem Durchmesser von etwa 15, 20 Kilometer und nach 15 Kilometer südlich, östlich, nördlich geht es schon nicht mehr. Chili kann es nie warm genug sein. Mein Papa hat immer gesagt, Chili wachsen dann, wenn man ganze Nacht vor Hitze nicht schlafen kann. Eric's father already grew chilies here 50 years ago. Altogether, Eric has 650 different varieties of chilies from 80 countries. And every year new ones are added. Just like the charapita, the by far most expensive. And also the one with the most extraordinary taste. Natürlich kannst du hineinbeißen. Wenn du mutig bist, ja. Ist sehr scharf. Und uh, wird dich für einige Minuten lahm leben, ja, denke ich mal. Der erste Geschmack ist eher so ein bisschen süß. Ja. Säuregehalt ist hoch. <lacht> Und auch die Schärfe. So im ersten Moment ist es keine Chili, um ehrlich zu sein. Klar, die Schärfe ist da. Wie würdest du es Aber Geschmack diese Süße, haben? dieses. Bärige, dieses Orangige, das ist also, da ist irgendwie viel drin. Would you have thought that on a heat scale from 1 to 10, the Charapita reaches up to a 9? This makes it one of the hottest chilies in the world. The heat is mainly at the top near the stem, the so-called pith, and it is quite something. Und das Gemeine bei dem ist, ja, du merkst das ja jetzt. Der Chili am Anfang ist wirklich erträglich, aber er kommt erst nach ein paar Minuten. Es ist ein Spätzünder. Hm. Es brennt da hinten. Und wie? But the chilies are not sold fresh. In the next step they are dried. Only now do they develop their special aroma that makes them so valuable. All that Eric has to do for this is to spread them out on a table. Es kommen nur die schönsten vom schönsten hinein. Wenn so Stängel abgefallen sind, das auch nicht hinein. The remaining berries are then dried for six to ten weeks. In this time, the chili loses seven eighths of its weight, but gains a multiple in taste. And then it is ready, the most expensive chili in the world. 